Hi, I'm Marie Bogro of O'Reilly Media. I'm here at Strata in Hadoop World with Marcel Koniker, who is the Chief Architect of Database Technology at Cloudera. Marcel, you are the architect of Impala. Can you speak a little bit about its history? Of course. Um, Impala, I had the idea for doing Impala, i.e. a uh, publicly available query engine for the Hadoop environment, uh, basically inspired by my work at uh, Google. So there I was the architect and uh, tech lead for the F1 query engine. And I felt like that technology was valuable and uh, should be available outside of the Google environment. So, and uh, friends of mine were working at Cloudera and uh, that, is, that basically led me to that, to this uh, collaboration, so to speak. So it was really the recognition that uh, what was available at the time was all focused on batch, right? This is sort of batch is sort of the, the origin of Hadoop in essence and still what drives uh, a lot of Hadoop still to this day. But uh, I knew that building SQL technology on a batch execution environment wouldn't really work, right? So this was sort of the, what, uh, what, what made me want to create this. Um, and what you see in Impala is, and this is also the recognition that the existing traditional um, techniques and uh, tricks that were used and had been developed for parallel database systems were still applicable in the Hadoop environment, but they needed a new, an, um, a new implementation and a new execution environment. So simply basing this on MapReduce, which was the de facto Hadoop runtime at the time, I knew was not a viable solution. So this is basically what led to the creation of Impala. And uh, initially there was a lot of, I want to say almost resistance. We did everything different from the ground up. We started uh, creating a new execution, local execution engine, um, unless, uh, and not use Postgres for instance. This was written in C++, which also went against the um, sort of grain in the Hadoop environment, which was all Java inspired. And so there was some resistance to that in the beginning, but I think the success has shown that this was the right path, right? The fact that we are still um, basically the, the performance leader in that space by a wide margin. And this is basically through the initial design of that system. Interesting. So how is Impala different? How is it different from other uh, SQL on Hadoop query engines? I think there are there are some systemic differences. So, for instance, we completely uh, uh, left out MapReduce from the beginning, and you now see the more modern, uh, what I want to call the more modern group of other SQL on Hadoop engines go in the same direction. So you saw with Hive on Tez, basically Hive trying to sidestep MapReduce, and you also see uh, Presto, which was created by Facebook, also not use MapReduce, and then uh, Spark SQL also not use MapReduce. So this was a design approach that is obviously uh, was valid and has been validated by others too. But uh, what is much harder to re replicate is the attention to detail we've been paying. So Impala has been designed for performance from the ground up. And to that end, we are also using runtime code generation using a tool called LLVM. And I think that has been one major factor for our success and also for the speed up you can get over the competing systems. So although there are other, for instance, Spark SQL also uses a form of runtime code generation, and uh, to my knowledge also Presto, but somehow that it has not been working out nearly as well. So there's still a major performance gap between these systems and Impala. So I think it is, and this is not as neatly summarized, the, um, there are a lot of other design differences that uh, when added up um, create this big performance gap and I think that'll be much harder to overcome for the other systems. So it's not just a matter of dropping one component, replacing it with another, but this is sort of the architecture from the ground up. Great. Uh, well, I know that 2.0 just was released in Impala. Can you, what new features can we expect with 2.0? 2.0 does have a number of features that our customers have been asking for. Um, some additional SQL functionality. So for instance, it adds support for analytic window functions. So analytic window functions were added to the, I think, 2003 SQL standard. And uh, this has been something our customers have been wanting for a while. So we were happy that we finally uh, managed to add it, obviously. And there's also more SQL completeness. So for instance, we just added support for um, correlated subqueries. 
which is also good to have. And then also um, we extended Impala to work for a data sets that, um, uh, where the intermediate results cannot be held in memory. So previously we had a limitation on um, the fact that the intermediate data sets for joins and aggregation needed to be held in memory and this is finally um, something we overcame with the addition of disk-based joins and aggregation. So now you can, you're not limited at all in the uh, size of the data set on which you can run a pod. Wonderful. So we have 2.0 now, but what do you see as the future of SQL on new query engines? Um, let me uh, be more specific. Let me talk about the immediate future of Impala. I think okay. you'll. <laughs> sure. So the 2.1 and 2.2 releases, um, you'll see that we'll add, there's going to be more SQL functionality, of course, so we're still aiming for more SQL completeness. Now it's, been, it's going to slow down a little bit because we actually have the majority, probably 95% of what our customers are actually using. Um, you will see some additional uh, input-output formats and some general performance improvements and usability improvements in 2.1. And then you'll see as a major new addition support for nested data types in 2.2 as well. So like I said, more SQL comp completeness and more applicability for um, non-traditional, what I would call non-traditional data sets. So things, people nowadays when they create applications, they write data sets in uh, JSON, for instance. That is a very heavily used uh, file format now. So I think uh, in general with SQL and Hadoop, I think you're going to see a, you're going to see two directions. On the one hand, you're going to see more SQL completeness and yet more performance gains and uh, eventually you will see basically a complete feature overlap between what you get nowadays from the commercial vendors and from SQL and Hadoop solutions. And I'm hoping that uh, Impala will get there first, obviously. So on the one hand, this is, I would call it uh, sort of feature parity with traditional analytic database systems. I think you will also see Impala in particular, you will see um, we're already we already know that we can match the performance of several of our commercial competitors uh, from customer-specific benchmarks. So we cannot publish these, obviously, for a number of reasons, but we already get that feedback internally. There are a number of other commercial competitors that are higher performance, and we will eventually, in the not too distant future, also, I would say, close up and probably eventually surpass them as well. So you will see, this is more of a, uh, like I said, feature completeness and performance consideration from what you get from commercial systems. But I think what's really important is the, um, the other angle, which is to make an analytics in particular much easier and remove barriers. So I think you will see a new breed of systems where it will become much easier to uh, dump a data set into Hadoop and then do something on it right away. So instead of having an ETL process uh, that forces you to, you know, being forced to load the data into an analytic database system and then being able to do something on it, I think you'll see that workflow change. And I think that is going to be a major innovation, right? It'll really change the face of how you analyze data. Wonderful. Thank you, Marcel. Anytime.